Okay, so today, today I'm in London with uh, Martin Raymond. Thanks very much, Martin, for Thanks, agreeing Simon. to talk to us today. Right, um, how would you describe what you do for a living? Uh, currently, at the minute, I suppose I've been punting professionally for about 20 years or so, last, certainly the last 15 years. Right, now, before we get into the nitty-gritty of what you actually do and how you win, um, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Are you brought up in the game? Uh, yeah, I've always been in, in racing um, years ago. My old man was a jockey and then I became a jockey's agent for a few sort of some good jockeys. Uh, one by one, they all eventually got rid of me. But I suppose my claim to fame would be nicking the Derby winner for Willie Ryan in 1997 on Benny the Dip. It was picked up as a spare ride. So that's one of my good points there. So what, for, what, what does a jockey's agent actually do? It's probably a little bit more technical now, but at the time, uh, if, if unless you had some of the top flight jockeys, it would be more like sort of uh, it, telesales, really. You know, you'd start off at the top of the page, keep ringing around the trainers until you eventually got a yes, offer up your five or six jockeys. It was a bit of a thankless task in the finish, but obviously I had some good jockeys, Willie, Dane O'Neill, Shane Kelly and whatever, and they had a pretty fair sort of um, a good book of rides to start with as a base. But in the finish, it was sort of getting me down and a bit of a thankless task. And I take my hat off to the to the lads that are still doing it now. Right, so as you earn your money with that, do they pay you a fee for each ride? You or? generally get about 10% of whatever they, they're getting on a Weatherby's check. Uh, I know the fees have gone up a bit now, but um, at the time when I first started doing it, there was no all weather racing. There wasn't racing in the winter. So it was sort of try and get what you can in the summer. And then um, that had to last the winter, which wasn't always the case. I was usually ramped up to the eyeballs by the time uh, March come round and um, it was a long process of trying to repay what you borrowed in the winter. So were, uh, were you a punter then? Oh yeah. Were, jo were jockeys good tipsters? Uh, absolutely, completely and utterly ruined me to be honest. Um, <laughs> not that they're supposed to give any tips but yeah it wasn't, um, I've learned the hard way of such. I've been through, completely through the mill and through the rinser when it comes to listening to jockeys tips. Right, so then you went full time punting? Um, after that, I was probably uh, in a commission agent um, that involved basically moving money for warm punters. Uh, obviously, I was following in the live stuff then, uh, and that was sort of in the heyday when we had some really good leads when punting was really sort of a good good time to be around the sort of horses um, when 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 a price was a price then sort of thing. But of course, it's changed a lot since. So in those days, would that have been teams of men with money in betting shops? Uh, we, we ha you used to have that. We used to have people up the West End in Chinatown and all over the country. And Betfair was very big then. So uh, it, it helped because the volumes were in Betfair were absolutely massive. If somebody came in with a big bet, you could just have it in one click. And, um, you know, it was, it was really the leads I was looking for sort of thing, rather than just getting, a, getting the bets on. I wanted to follow in the live stuff. So I was always punting away doing that. Right, so we assume that the sort of people that are having the bets on can't get bets. Yeah, exactly. I mean, anybody, anybody, any loser can go and get a bet in the high street or online very easily. But the ones that can't get the bets obviously have to come to the agents to get their money on. So it's normally quite sharp business. OK, then tell us about the in-running punting. You got in that quite early, I understand. Yeah, uh, they, they were good days as well to start with. Um, uh, I'd heard about, um, you know, the fast picks and this and that and somebody... A good friend of mine said, if you can get the codes off SIS, I'll give you a massive drink. That was sort of a bit of an eye-opener. Next thing you know, I appeared at Lingfield. About six of us, I used to go with my mate from Newmarket and set up with a laptop and a telly. And uh, this is before they rented out the boxes there, the hospitality boxes. And um, I'd click away on something that would look like it was, but bet what it was, beat. Sort of, and get myself three or four hundred quid in a race. And I just thought, absolutely lovely. At last, I've cracked it. I'm going to be a millionaire in a month's time. And unfortunately, it lasted a month's time before they put a big spread in the rating post about don't play with the in-running track players. And um, we had a great, great month as such. And then it sort of, it died off a bit. But I did it for about four, five, six years. Uh, we used to go to Lingfield, Southall, Leicester, Wolverhampton um, all the time and um, just rent a box out, 600 quid between us, 200 quid a seat, three of us. And, um, and crack away, but there was, there was good volumes in, the, in Betfair then, and of course things have changed. Now, tell us, if, did you have anybody in your early days, any sort of punting mentors that put you on the path to out of bet? Uh, many, 
many as such, but um, one I can remember, one of my, a good friend of mine, I wouldn't say one of my mentors, but somebody that sticks in my mind. I mean, I like the characters in racing. A good, and a, a good friend of mine called Stephen Radford, he was kind of the best chaser I've ever seen in my life. I mean, if he got behind, he was capable of, of uh, laying a short one to get out of jail. And a good, good lad, good friend, still around now, going strong to this day. And uh, I, he's just, I wouldn't say a mentor, but a character that I can remember. Okay, so you're a successful punter and you have been for a while. So what, what's your angle? Because it's very difficult to keep your head in front in this game. Uh, it is, yeah. I don't profess to be sort of a genius. I stick to what I stick to what I know, which tends to be the maidens and the novice races. Um, I'm really not too bothered about the handicaps, so unless I've got a real strong message for one in a handicap, perhaps an unexposed group horse running off, you know, the high 80s or something, and then I'll uh, I'll make myself a bit more busy. But I want a, I want a maiden where I fancy one. Got loads of negs in the race, and it gets down to two or three runners. Strong message, get on the night before, get on early and crack away like that. Right, we'll talk about getting on later, but at the moment we're in a lovely place in London, but you're actually in Newmarket, so you've got your ear to the ground up there. I've not short of tips, that's for sure. I've got, um, I've got people fe fe feeding me with all sorts of uh, live ones, good ones, crap ones, nonsense. Most of it you can just sort of put your put your fingers in your ear and forget about it. Um, I like a money tip. I like it when somebody puts their money where their mouth is and says, there you go, there's my 400 quid. Can you get me on this? And then I'll, I'll drink them for it afterwards if they get it right. If they get it wrong, then, um, you know, a lot of them have. I just block them. I don't want to know anymore. Don't call me anymore. And, uh, you know, you learn, you've been fed so much complete and utter nonsense over my time. You, you learn the hard way and you learn who to trust and who not to trust. Right, so being based in Newmarket, do you have more of an edge on the flat than the jumps? Oh, 100% the flat. I don't really know anything about the jumps. Don't profess to. I've got a couple of friends who get good messages on the, on the jumps. I tend to rely on them for the jumps messages. I still don't understand the jumps form, and I've been trying to sort of get my head around it for, for the last 15 years. But no, give me a seven furlong or a mile maiden any time rather than a three mile chaser on heavy ground. Impossible to, uh, to, to sort of get the form of that. I can't work it out. So I'm guessing then that if you, if you specialise in maidens and that sort of novice race, is that you're more of a, you listen to people rather than get your head in the form book? Yeah, you're exactly right. Um, I mean, I've got a, what I think is a reasonable opinion on those maiden races. If they're unraced, I've got some sensible people in some good yards uh, tipping up to me or asking me to bet horses for them as such. Um, you generally know, but I mean, Betfair tells a good story now, gives you sort of a few clues you want to know. But yeah, I mean, the handicaps and all those speed figures and this and that. I mean, I've, I know loads of people that just say, oh, this is top of the speed figures, this and that and whatever. For me, put a line through them. I'm not interested in, in speed figures and five furlong, six furlong handicaps. You know, they generally always come up with the five or six to one favourite of the big handicap on a Saturday anyway. And um, I don't know, for, for people that I know that bet speed figures, that, when I analyse where their bets come from, it's usually them winning on an unexposed horse rather than a horse that's had 20 runs in the speed figures. So I, I am a sort of info man rather than a full man. Right, and would, would um, all of a sudden the ground coming up soft or heavy deter you from having a bet even if it came from one of your lively marks? Yeah, I mean, I hate, hate betting on soft ground. Can't stand it. And heavy ground, do my absolute brain. So, I'm, I'm, you know, I'll confess to that. Most people like to say, oh, I... I'll look for a heavy ground horse and whatever. I'd prefer just to kind of half walk away when it's like that. I've suffered the hard way, done my absolute proverbials on heavy ground. Can be ticking away nice and dandy for a month or so. Win, 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 win. Have loads of winning days. Heavy ground comes and I can do the whole lot back in a day, which is painful and heart-wrenching. So would you become a layer in those circumstances? Not always, you know. I'm, I'm more of a punter than a layer. Um, I don't lay that many horses. Um, I find that the value sort of lies in the punting, really. And if, if I click that pink button, it's just incredible how many times they just win. Whatever, the, whether it's evens, 8 to 1, 10 to 1, 6 to 1, I can take £20 off their back just by clicking in 100 quid on that. Right, so Martin. I, I'm a punter, not a layer. Right, Martin, talking about clicking, I had, a, I had a mysterious message last night from somebody that said to ask you, that they said, no one's quicker on the click to the in-running coupe 
is that no, that's a big edge apparently. Can you, do you want to talk about that? Uh, well, we used to do the in running, like I say, it, it was fantastic. And I, I used to go in a hotel room at Lingfield. And I used to have the maintenance man squared up so you could you could get in a. It was two hundred quid in a box, but I had the maintenance man squared up and used to give him twenty five quid a meeting. He'd unlock one of the rooms for me, and I'd just be in and out and out the door. So it got my got my exes down. There was only eight rooms in the. Uh, uh, in the hotel there that had sort of the live feed in and I was the only one of in the one of the eight rooms at the time so it, it, it was good days then you could click away in 50 quid 100 quid a quick a click um, and, and get good money but you, you know the in running's gone now don't really do it anymore lots of the lads still do it but you know I think they're fighting a losing battle. Now the other message was the non-runner coop yeah, the non-runner coop. Well, that's a, that's that's still. That's a, I missed one today, funny enough, but I'm not going to tell you which which race I missed it on. But yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, the, the firms don't like that. It's a real red flag for them. Um, yellow card as such, you know, and a couple of strikes and you're out. So you tend to have to get in the shops to do that, where you know one's not going to run. And um, obviously, you know, if, if there's if they're better in each or two, one of them's not going to run. You can sometimes be on a, a two on chance. There's ten on. Uh, it's a license to print money really so you've got to be on the lookout for it and be on early enough that you've you can you've got to have enough time so you can get around the shops and get on but yeah it's a it's a good trick that one and you must feel a bit sorry for the bookmakers when you're doing that <laughs> yeah, thing, surely. yeah i'm sure i do yeah yeah now some, somebody else that i interviewed previously that doesn't have any sympathy whatsoever for bookmakers is uh, a good friend of yours apparently dean valentine can you tell us a bit about your relationship yeah with i've dean been then? dealing with dean and simon for ages um Dean's, uh, they're, they're both sharp cookies, um, both in the, been ga in the game for years and years. I must have known Dean 25 years, I should think, and uh, I, I bet with him um, quite a bit now. Dean, uh, he loves a pound note, Christ. He's hung hungry, he's one of the hungriest people I ever know. Doesn't leave much meat on the bone for anybody, and he's, his partner, Simon, well, he's a great lad as well, and... Um, but sometimes a bit of a complete buck when he gives us a tip. But uh, there you go. I've done a lot of business with them over their years, and um, they're, they're both good lads to deal with. I know the time of day. Dean Schiff some more money, so by rights they should have the keys to the safe. Well, yeah, but Dean did tell me that um, they also endure some quite bad losing runs. Um, how do you deal with them when they run up? Uh, well, you know, they can, they can, it can be sort of quite soul-destroying when you have bad runs. Short head, short for whatever reason, you know, everybody has 101 chances beat on them. I've had thousands of 101 chances, like you know, you, you go down and have a drink afterwards, sit down in the pub, to wander around Newmarket High Street, talking to myself for quite a while, find a nice, quiet pub to sort of sit and talk to my sin, myself in and analyze it, and then only for a nuisance to come and tap you on the shoulder and ask you how your luck is, sort of thing, when you've just done your brain. So it's, it's hard to take the losing runs. You have to keep going, cut your stakes down, and um, you keep persevering, but something will turn up to get us out of it. It usually does. That's interesting, because your friend, in inverted commas maybe, that texted me last night, said mm. you're, a, you're known to be quite an emotional punter. <laughs> now, do, does this affect your judgment um, at all, or do you uh, lead you to chase? Uh, good question. Good question. I'm gathering I know who that's probably from. Um, yeah, I can be an emotional punter. Well, who can't be? If you're not an emotional punter, you shouldn't be doing it, should you? Uh, it's all right if you've got a big enough tank just to absorb the losses, but sometimes I'm sure every punter at their time has been on oxygen and, uh, you know, had their last whack on something. It gets beat a short head. Of course you can be emotional and throw things at the telly and snap the remote controls, and we've all done it, and me most of all. And I can, you know, I, I, I'm probably right, emotional, but on the other side of the fence, when you've had your last few quid on something, a good bet on something, your absolute lot, and it wins, it can get quite emotional. You can be out of it, and I've been in it a lot of times and, uh, and managed to wriggle out of it a few times, so it's great when you're back on your feet.